So this tank has been sitting empty for quite a while now. Uh, regular viewers of the channel might remember my Red Plants Only Dutch style aquascape that I had in this tank. Yeah, so that one used to be over here on this side of the room, but I didn't really enjoy it anymore, so I took it down and replaced it with a new tank in the new aquascape. This is the Neon Green Rasbora aquascape, and if you didn't see the build video about this one, I'll leave a link on top of the screen and in the video description. So I was actually thinking of selling this tank just because I currently already have nine tanks up and running. I don't really have space for another one, so yeah, I just didn't really have a purpose for this tank anymore. But then I went and get my hair cut. And ever since we moved in here, I've been going to the same barber. And he's a really cool guy. He knows about my hobby, he knows about my aquascaping channel. And he's always very interested, like, hey, how's it going? How's the, how's the YouTube channel? How are the tanks? So when I showed him some pictures of my aquascapes, he actually said, hmm, I wouldn't mind having something like that in the barbershop. So as soon as he said that, my mind already started thinking like, okay, where can we put it? Like, where, where would be a nice place to have a, like a small nano tank? And when I mentioned to him that I had a spare tank and maybe we could do something together, he was actually very, very excited. So today we're going to make a small aquascape for my barber. I think it's super cool. We're going to have an aquascape in a barber shop. It's also going to be a cool opportunity for to introduce new people to the hobby, you know, because like a barber shop gets a lot of like random customers that probably don't know anything about aquascaping. So yeah, it might be, this might be an interesting way to kind of introduce more people to the hobby. Now my barber, he, lo he knows absolutely nothing about aquascaping. So when it comes to maintenance, uh, it'll be my responsibility. Like I'll let him know how to feed the fish. I mean, they can take care of that. But maintenance, that'll be my job. Now I don't want to give myself a lot of extra work. So this has to become like a super low maintenance, almost like an ecosystem aquascape. Okay, first substrate layer is in. This is old aquasol that I reused from this uh, previous layout. I always like to keep it for, yeah, you never know when you're gonna need it. And actually for this project, for this purpose, it's perfect because we don't wanna use a fresh aquasol that's gonna be releasing a ton of nutrients because then we have to do more water changes, but it's gonna be, it's gonna be in a barbershop. I won't be there to do the water changes. So old aquasol without a lot of nutrients is actually perfect for this setup. Um, I'll probably just add in some, some root taps. Okay, time for some hardscape. I'm not sure yet if I want to use rocks only or use rocks and wood, but I want to use these rocks right here. This is maple leaf stones. It's something that you don't really see very often used in aquascaping, but I think it's actually quite nice. They have this really like red brown color, very interesting texture. They're quite light as well. They don't really, they're not really super heavy. And I think they also don't really affect the water parameters. So yeah, perfect for this project. Okay, so played around for a few minutes with the rocks. It's very simple, but I actually quite like it. Only this one needs to be higher, I think. Like that. Yeah, very simple, but it's uh, it's different from what I usually do, my usual style. And it has to be simple as well, you know, it has to be easy to maintain, so simple layout. Yeah, I like it. I think the next, next step is to kind of smooth out the aquasol a little bit, and then we cover everything with a nice decorative sand. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna take a bit of a risk here. I have some sand here that I've actually never used before, never tried it, and it's quite light. So it's either gonna look very good, or it's gonna be way too bright and look very weird. If that's the case, we can always siphon it out and replace it with something else. But uh, if you don't try, you don't know. So let's give it a try.
So here's something you don't see very often, a floating rock. I thought, you know, I'm going to do a rock only layout. At least I don't have to worry about gluing the wood together, making sure it doesn't float. And here we have a floating rock. Sure, why not? Uh, I just wanted to fill the tank with water just to kind of see how all the sand and gravel would settle. Also, I noticed that the sand was very dusty, so I knew for sure it would kind of cloud the water. So just a quick water change and then we can uh, continue. Okay, it's now the next day and I think we're almost ready to start planting. I mean, I'm happy with the hardscape, but I think it looks good. We have nice contrasting colors. We have the black background, we have the red rocks, the white sand in the foreground. Yeah, it's simple, but I like it. Well, I actually did not buy any plants for this uh, little nano tank. I kind of want to keep it low budget. And also this week or maybe next week, I will start taking down the Big Shallow, which still has a lot of plants in there as well. And yeah, we currently have nine tanks up and running, so I'm sure we can collect some plants for this little nano tank. So the only requirements that I have for the plants is that they're all slow growing and they can grow without CO2 because we're not going to be using CO2 in this nano tank. So we have some nice crypts in this tank that we can use. We have some nice clumps of Bush of Lambda as well. I recently pulled out some Blixa from one of my other nano tanks as well. So we can use this Blixa Japonica. It's okay without CO2, it's not the best, but should should do just fine. I also still have this in vitro cup of Halantium Bolivianum Quadro Cristantes. This cup is like, I don't know, maybe like four months old or something. I got it when I set up the shrimp tank over there, the blue velvet shrimp tank. So that must have been four months. And it still it looks absolutely fine. So I think we can use this as well. Okay, so let's see if we can remove this crypt over here without making too much of a mess. It's probably going to have very, very long roots. Yeah, long roots. So I'm actually just going to cut the roots and leave the rest inside the tank it's gonna help us kind of keep it sort of neat and it's also much easier to plant again without these long roots beautiful this is the crypt wendy ti compact so it stays a lot smaller than the regular crypt wendy ti yeah definitely a plant that i would recommend okay then the bush of Flander, this one is just attached to some lava rock so we can just remove it okay so let's see what we harvested so far actually let me put it more on the light so this is the clump of Anubius Gang. I actually have two of that. And I also have two patches of the uh, um, Cryptocorin. And then a small, a lot of small plantlets of the Plexa Japonica. So I think we can start with that. I think we still need something for the, for the back corner over there. I was thinking of using this plant over here. This is the Cypress Hell Fairy. Kind of looks like Jungle Well, but it grows a lot slower, but this one uh, is not really doing very well, so maybe we have to find something else for that. Man, I really like how this is starting to come together. So we have the crypt over here on the side. That shouldn't really become much bigger. Uh, then we have the blixas in the foreground. Well, it's not foreground. In the midground as well. So these are very small right now. And they will, they will grow a bit bigger. Basically this size. So over there you see the, uh, the light green yeah, grass type plant. That's the blixa as well. So they're going to grow a little bit bigger. Actually I have to spray them because they're going to start to dry out. This plant is a little bit sensitive to drying out, so make sure we keep it nice and moist. Yeah, and then all along the background, I use that in vitro cup of the Halantium. So that's also still going to grow a little bit bigger. So we're going to have a nice green grass in the background. Some green reddish in the mid-ground here. Brown over there. Then I was still thinking of using this bush of Landra, but I feel like it's a bit too big right now. So I also had a smaller patch that I've kind of just, yeah, 
divide into smaller pieces so we can just place small pieces of Bruce of Landra all along the rocks. Okay, so next I want to add a little bit of moss to these rocks. So I got this stuff right here. This is uh, actually a very rare, very expensive moss. It's called Busa Vlandera moss. Of course you can use any type of moss for this. I like this one because it kind of stays green even in low tech and low light conditions. So I've done the same in this cape. So you can kind of see on those rocks, like we have these small patches of moss. Yeah, it just looks really cool, you know. I would prefer to do this without glue. So for example, here on the rock, we have a nice little crevice. So we can just kind of wedge it in there and it should, it should stay there just fine. See, that looks pretty cool. Now we just need to find something for the back right corner. But first let's actually add the filter. So you might've already seen it in the shallow here. I've been kind of cycling a small internal filter just so we can kind of cycle the, the tank faster and we can add the fish faster so I can give it to my barber. So let's actually add in the filter first and then we can see how much space we have left for planting. Okay, so there's not a lot of space, but there's still plenty enough to put some background plants in there. So I think I've been thinking about it and we could pull out some of this. This is the... Uh, the Valisneria nana, dwarf jungle veil, I guess. Or we could use this, the um, dwarf sagittaria, could also be nice. Or maybe just both. Okay, fast forward, it's now 10 days later, 10 days since we scaped it. Uh, tank is looking good, hasn't really changed much since we scaped it. Just the water got nice and clear. Plants have kind of settled in a little bit. Uh, today we're handing it over to my barber, so we kind of have to hurry up a little bit because I have an appointment in an hour and a half and we still have a lot of work to do. Well, I mean, the only thing that's still missing is some inhabitants, but like I said, it's only been 10 days. So before we add anything to this tank, I just want to make sure that the tank is cycled. So let's do a quick ammonia and nitrite test. We're all good. This is nitrite, completely yellow. Ammonia, also very light yellow, so should be fine. The only thing that I'm still missing for the tank is the glass lid. Normally this comes to supply with these dental escapers tanks. But I think I broke mine or something, I can't find it anymore. So I ordered a new lid because yeah, this tank is going to be sitting in a barber shop. There's going to be hairs flying around everywhere. And we don't want people's hairs in this tank, that's disgusting. And then in terms of inhabitants, I'm thinking for sure some cherry shrimp. So on this tank right here, I have a lot of cherry shrimp. A bit too much actually. And I want to kind of keep the, the most beautiful red ones myself. So I can just net out the ones that are not that super red. For example, this one right here, you see it's not completely red. So we can take out those and add them to our barber tank. And then over here in the forest style aquascape, which is now completely overgrown, I have my guppies that I've been uh, breeding. It's not really called breeding when there's guppies, right? That I've been growing out myself. So these guppies are another good addition to this tank, I think. have a nice group of cherry shrimp with about 10 12 something like that and I saw one pregnant female as well with eggs so that's good and then the guppies I think we also have about 10 or so nice mix of males and females so yeah, I think we're ready to go mm -hmm. 